Hi, today I would like to talk about different kinds of electric motors. Um, in particular, we're going to focus on DC motors, uh, universal and single phase AC. There are many other kinds of motors out there and each of them have different characteristics and properties, but the reason I picked these three is because they are most commonly used in everyday life and we can find them in various household devices, fridges, washing machines, fans, vacuum cleaners and many other appliances. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull apart a few different devices and see what sort of motors they employ, how they operate and uh, what's used for speed control and uh, basically how they wired. And most importantly, we'll try to answer the question why that given electric motor is used for that specific application. In other words, why do we need all these different designs uh, of motors instead of using the same type uh, again and again? Because essentially, what every electric motor does, it simply converts electrical energy into kinetic energy. So why care about all these different designs? And the answer is more complicated than just the size uh, or the power output of the motor because some DC machines are actually more powerful than uh, induction motors and some induction motors are more powerful than their DC counterparts. Pulling apart multiple devices and trying to describe characteristics of different motors in one video would make it excessively long and hard to follow. So we will mostly concentrate on DC motor today and uh, cover universal and single phase AC in the next videos. So okay, here I have a handheld blender which operates from 230 volts AC power, which means we just basically need to plug it in into the wall and uh, it doesn't have any speed control. So all we have to do is just plug it into the wall as I said and uh, push this button here. So let's pull it apart and see how it works. All right, this is all internal components, a uh, small PCB with a switch, uh, fuse, capacitor, and a few diodes. We'll come back to it in a moment, uh, but right now let's take a look at that DC motor here. So first of all, yes, it's a DC motor. And to power a DC motor from AC power source, we need to convert AC to DC. And this is what this diode bridge here for. If you want to learn a little bit more about DC motor principles of operation, I put link in the description, so make sure you go and watch it in case you need some refreshments on it. So let's say you're an engineer designing this uh, very cheap blender like this one. So why would you go with setup like this? Why would you use a DC motor? Well, first of all, because DC motors are not expensive, especially this one with permanent magnets data. And I'm pretty sure they didn't put some rare earth expensive magnets here. Another positive thing about a brush DC motor like this can be a great starting torque, uh, which is a crucial factor for a device like this. Because, you know, normally when we use Blender, we, we don't push the button and wait until it gets to some reasonable speed. We need that torque right away. And typically, as I said before, permanent magnet brushed motors have that low speed, high torque characteristics. As you can see on this diagram, maximum torque of DC motor is at zero speed, where DC motor draws maximum current. And torque always tails off as speed increases. Another reason to choose brush DC motor is very simple speed control. So as we already know, torque of brush DC motor is proportional to the current, while the rotational speed is proportional to the voltage applied to the motor. And for that reason, we don't need any complicated electronics uh, to power the motor. With constant load on the shaft, speed will increase as voltage increases. So high torque and simple design are main reasons to choose this little humble DC motor for your application. 
But just like any other electric motor, Rush DC motor has its own downside as well. And they mainly link with the high electromagnetic interference because brushes rubbing against the commutator generate a lot of EMI, electromagnetic noise, which affects other electronic devices. So some shielding and filtering required. But Rush DC motors don't just produce electric noise, they can also create audible noise and eventually will require brushes replacement. Considering all the facts, brush DC motor would be a good choice for some high torque applications, but you wouldn't really want to use it for something that runs 24-7 and doesn't require all the power and torque, like a small fan or air conditioning compressor. Unless we deal with battery powered devices, then using DC motor sometimes becomes the main point of the whole thing. Right now, let's take another look at the circuit board we saw at the beginning of the video. It consists of bridge rectifier, metal oxide varistor or MOV. Then we have so-called across-the-line capacitor, which is used to filter EMI or RFI, radio frequency interference, and the switch to close the circuit and make it work. From now on, I'm going to use this diagram and try to briefly describe all these components one by one, starting probably with diet bridge rectifier. But I'm not going to give you a full spec about all these components because they all deserve a separate video. You can find links in the description covering all these components in the greater details. Okay, let's get back to our circuit diagram. Bridge rectifier is a circuit that typically comprises of four or more diodes, and the main purpose of it is to convert AC to DC. So we have alternating current before the bridge and more or less direct pulsating current after the bridge. In our case, we also have one more diode connected across the motor. I'm not going to tell you what this one for, so you can do some research and uh, let me know in the comment section. Now let's move on to the capacitor. That capacitor, as you can see, it's placed between line and neutral. And you may say, hold on a minute, I thought capacitors pass AC and block DC. Yes, they do, as a general rule. But there is also such thing as capacitive resistance. A capacitor charges or discharges a current flow through it, which is restricted by the internal impedance of the capacitor. And that impedance varies with the applied frequency. So any change in the supply frequency will have a big effect on the capacitive reactance value. And we may even calculate it using this formula here, where 2 pi is 2 pi, F is uh, applied frequency, and C stands for capacitance in farads. So for our capacitor, we have to plug in 50 as a frequency in hertz, and multiply it by 6.68 microfarads, and then by 2 pi, which is roughly 6.28. And uh, doing all the math, and it's gonna give us 4681 ohm. So it's a quite a big resistance we have here when 230 volts, 50 hertz AC is applied to, not to our circuit. But because the capacitor is not a constant resistance, it can dramatically change to other frequencies. So the reason we need that capacitor in the first place because it's providing EMI filtering, as we already know, brush DC motors are a good source of EMI and transients. This capacitor is also class X, and it, if it fails, due to a huge overvoltage, it is likely to fail short. This failure in turn would cause fuse to open and protect the circuit. Next in our list is that little blue thing, which is a varistor. It is a varying resistor whose resistance depends on the applied voltage. Varistor, the name itself sounds like a linguistic blend of words, varying and resistor. And it is safe to say that varistor is a voltage dependent resistor, where resistance changes automatically with the change in applied voltage. So unlike the capacitor, it's not that much about the frequency, but it's all about the voltage itself. When circuit experience high transient voltage, the voltage across the varistor increases greater than so-called clamping voltage, which in turn increases current and the varistor acts as a conductor, suppressing the voltage transients to the ground. So that was a little overview of DC motor control circuit and uh, that pretty much concludes our video about DC motors application and uh, I hope you find that useful and I see you next time. Bye.